Right. Yo, what up, though? Back in the morning, top of the morning. Oh, man, we here, yeah. man. Another week. I feel spaced out. Did another one and, and another one. Yes, sir. You wow. already know the question. How y'all boys feeling? Oh, let's start with you then. Shoot, I feel 10 out of 10, bro. Mm. Like, we came, got to see some family from out of town, which is fantastic, bro. Uh, yeah, Lord's moving, bro, even when I'm not moving. So, yeah. <laughs> That's real, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm moving. Hey, he's like, he's like, honest, yeah. That's <laughs> Dream. <laughs> nah, bro. It's called jokes. Uh, <laughs> You've been in your word, bro. You ain't slick. A couple of years. <laughs> uh, for me, I'm feeling, I ain't gonna lie, I'm probably a 10 out of 10 too, man. Mm-hmm. I can't comply, man. Can't complain. Uh, man, it's just been a solid week. Been able to be productive, or more productive, I should say, in the latter portion. But um, uh, my guy's been faithful and good. Got a really great week upcoming, man. I'm, I'm super excited. And uh, yeah, I can't wait. 10 out of 10. I hope we're in a 10 out of 10 for the rest of the week, man. Big win, big win. So hear me out. I'm thinking it's like, it's like a nine out of 10, but here's the thing, all the struggles, I have great optimism for. And so I was like, man, because of these, the, the one thing that's bringing me back, because I have great optimism for it, I feel like I'm a 10 out of 10, because of the optimism I have for it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, it's like, I'm for no, nine out of 10, man. 10 out of 10. I'd, hey. I'd say it's 10 out of 10, because hey, of the yeah, optimism yeah. for it. I love the perspective. I'll take it. Hey, context hey. is key, bro. Yeah. No, that's that fool type of news, man. All the time. Hey, hey man, it got me inspired, man. 30 out of 30, we feeling good. Man. The wig. To win. Now, I got I got to lay something out before you. We always have these conversations with each other, man. But I guess I guess the, the angle that I want to approach to this episode is something that we're all currently all three of us are dealing with. But it's just that next stage of life and thinking about what's ahead of us. And I think it's rooted in that word like calling and like purpose. And I think a lot of us are in a similar position watching like, you know, what am I here on earth for? Or what is the calling that God has on my life for? And I'm curious for you guys because you guys are both entering like these transitional phases in your life and you're thinking about what's next and what God has for you and this is next season of your life but break down what what is what what are your thoughts been on like calling or like purpose and if you found either one of those things in your life there's a oh yeah thoughts together um uh, I would say I think for first of all I think people are so caught up okay no first of all I'll say that we're all here on purpose like God has everybody here on purpose and so now the question comes what is our purpose and I would say that I think first of all that we have to look not at our actions but our heart posture I would think that a lot of what our calling is is our heart posture a heart posture to love to care and that can happen in any job field and so I don't have all my thoughts on it yet but I, I don't know if every if every person has a, like a set job that they should do like this is their only job God he wants to hear I meet a bunch of people that are up in life coming out of high school or college and they're saying God he wants me doing what it's like I think God he wants you being a faithful person and someone who's putting your trust in him and I would say that that looks different for each person I think that so how many people are comparing well my friend Johnny's doing this yeah but you're not Johnny <laughs> and so I think that it's a it's different for each person I think that the foundation hey back on past episode is the same for each person with trusting in him and I think that you've got to have two there's two important things too um, you gotta be prayed up about it, and you gotta seek wise counsel. But I'm just sharing to a bunch of different people. If if people over your childhood have said that you're gifted at this, and many people in different areas say it, I think that's for sure something to look into, chase after, knock up on that door. But I don't think it's a set job. God wants me here, and my friend, God wants him there. Um, but I think it's more of a heart posture and your at and your attitude towards these these things. Yeah, and I yeah, I like that. I think. Uh... Like for me, when I think of like the words calling and purpose, I think the first verse that comes to mind is First Corinthians seven seventeen, where Paul says, like, I, w- I wish every man to be a Christ follower where God has placed them, you know. And so I think um, I think everybody here has a purpose. A purpose is to be a Christ follower where God has placed you and to just be try, try to be like Jesus wherever you're at. But I think a calling is doing that in different facets. And I think that's like when people think of a calling they think it's got to be one thing it can be multiple things like it can be multiple places like people are evangelists they're not just at one country like they're at other countries as well you know and doing tons of different things and evangelizing in totally different ways so i just think like it's yeah i think like a lot of people do overcomplicate like you know having a calling and so so many people are focused on like having a calling instead of focusing on being like jesus and i just think like we need to just be like jesus wherever we're at and we just need to like be like strive to be after his character instead of like trying to figure out okay which exact facet am I going to do that in because I think once you 
if you're constantly like, over, if you overlook in the journey, you're just, and you focus on the destination, you'll miss the stuff that God is doing within the journey, man. So I just think like, we just need to focus on like, let's be like Jesus every single day to the best yeah. of our ability. Oh man, I was above with some great points, man. I think at the end of the day, we first have to make the distinction that if there's a difference between the purpose and the calling. Now, I think for me, in my opinion, like our purpose on this earth, everybody is to, to glorify God in all the things that we do. Now, to your point, it's different for being different people, whether that's a specific vocation that you have or a specific career that you have, whatever it is, that ties into like the calling. But everybody's purpose, you know, who are in Christ is to glorify God in all the works that they do. Now, going into like the calling side, I think it's important to consider like some people <laughs> like to self diagnose their own callings. And I, I think that's tough because we're not in a position to determine what our calling is. And so you have a lot of people who, claim to be certain things, and I'm not going to name names or name specific things that they identify themselves as, but I think the very essence of like a calling has to indicate that there must be someone who is calling and there must be someone who is a callee. And so in that instance, that means God is the caller and that we have to be the callee. So then if we find that out, then we go into like the realm of discovering what that looks like tangibly for everybody or practically for everybody else. And I think the best place to start is asking yourself, what is it that one, that people affirm in my life? Are these things like evident, are they bearing fruit? And then two, can I glorify God in these things? Because you might be called or you might assign yourself to be good at certain different careers, whether that's sports or whether that's culinary or whether that's, you know, in the business world, but are you glorifying God in those things? Mm -hmm. I think that's a question that we have to ask ourselves. So if somebody's looking at, oh, what is, what is my meaning here on this earth? What am I here on earth for? One, identify, hey, I'm here to glorify God, and then look into the specific areas in life where you feel like you're able to glorify God in the things that you do. Yeah, I think like even, I think a lot of, you're talking about people like misdiagnose their calling. I think like, you know, some people think like the calling is a conference call, but it's not, it's just for you. <laughs> like it's literally just for you. It's a call between you and God, you know? And I think like we need to stop focusing on what other people are doing instead of focus on what God is doing in our life. And I think I got so caught up in just comparison, man. Like this person is doing this. These people is evangelizing with this amount of people. And I'm just like, man, I'm just here. But you got to understand, we say it like all the time. It's just like, you know, your life may be the only Bible somebody ever reads. So if it's like, man, if I'm too busy focusing on trying to be like somebody else's life, how am I going to be able to reach the people that's around me where I'm placed at, you know? I think it's key, perfect, how it's, it's not a conference call. I think of all the people that I call, I, and I call each person for a different reason. I also answer the phone different for each person. And you, you call me, hey, what's up, what's up? If it's mom, hi, hello. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I call here. Boss, no yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, again, it's not a common calling. Each person has, has a different calling. And that's that key thing. I'm big on this because I'm coming out of college. And so I've been in that comparison thing, too, where, again, Johnny or, Je or, or uh, Mark or something has this thing. And I'm jealous on them. It's like we just got different. Callings. And yeah. just because we have different callings doesn't mean that someone's doing a better job. Just because someone makes a higher pay doesn't mean that he's better than, than me. I also, I think it's key that we keep knocking on different doors. I think so many people are scared of missing their calling, and so that's how that they don't try to do anything. And that's where you end up having problems because, as Mr. Perkins says, God doesn't move parked cars. And so if you're sitting there like, well, should I go left, right? Like, you're not doing anything. I say go left until it stops, until it doesn't work, but then turn right. But it's like, we just can't pause and sit and think, well, what does he want me to do? I'm praying about, like, be active, do do, do something. Keep knocking up the doors and checking this and checking up on that. I want to build on that school of thought because only in, in society where do we believe that we can just be stagnant and then get everything that we want in life. Like, mm -hmm. I think actively, like if we think that verse Matthew 6, 33, it says to seek that action verb. Like, so yeah. like we're, we're literally called to seek out and be active in our lives. So if we're trying to persuade ourselves or to mm -hmm. deceive ourselves into thinking that we can get things or get a calling by just remaining still, I think we're just fooling ourselves. But I will say this, um, when we're looking at just like in the middle sense of like what callings are and what people have been called, I want to look at Jesus first because he called many people into his yeah. ministry, right? And you got to understand, like, a calling isn't something that is just a sign, like, on, I'm not going to go that, that might have been some heresy, but <laughs> you might not know what your calling is the moment that's come out of the womb, but eventually it's revealed to you in due time, but don't remain stagnant in the, the, the meantime of doing that because if you look at, like, Peter or any of the other disciples, 
they were like grown adults when they were called. So Peter was a fisherman, but Jesus called him to be a fisher of men. And he didn't even start his technical calling until after Jesus died and rose again. So Jesus, in the middle of those three years, Peter was working and, and growing and becoming who God called him to be. And then he set out on a destination to actually fulfill that calling. So like my encouragement to people who's like looking for meaning or looking for what their calling is, is like seek God's kingdom first, seek his face. And I believe in due yeah. time, he'll reveal that to you. And then he'll show you by knocking on those doors, what that calling is. And up when you're going to that conference call, like, yeah, your calling is not a conference call, but I do need, I think you need to be around people in a conference around you to help you reveal what that calling is. Yeah, bro. And I love like we talked about like that action of seeking, right? It reminds me of Jeremiah 29, 13, where he says like, those who will find me are the ones who seek me with all yeah. their heart. You know, and I just think like going out and seeing like, okay, God, what do you have for me? I'm not just sitting passively and just like, sitting here, you know what I'm saying? And then on top of the point of just like talking about with Jesus and the disciples, man, is like, are you okay with dropping everything you know to to accept that call, to answer that call, you know? And so I think like, you look at Matthew, this man was a tax collector, this man making bread, he of the upper echelon of the, of the society. And Jesus like, hey, come and follow me. Mm -hmm. And he dropped everything he knew and he came and he just, he just said, yes. So I just think like, sometimes that's what a calling looks like is just for us to drop everything that we're familiar with or what we're comfortable with and say yes. And I think about like Peter, they even like uh, talked about it in John 20 is just like how Peter was comfortable being a fisherman. That's something that he was, that he mm -hmm. did. Like that was his place where he was, he was comfortable that that was something that he went to, you know, when things got tough. And so Jesus was like, Hey bro, come follow me. And he dropped, <laughs> and he dropped and said, instead of being fit, instead of being a fisherman, you're going to be a fisher of men. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I think it's so important that we actually look at our lives and be like, man, like if God called me to do this, am I okay with dropping everything I know to truly follow him if I want to live a Christ-led lifestyle? I think that that's huge too, because as you were to fishing from fishing fish to fishing men. So he didn't change what he did. He's, he's kind of changed how he did it kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think it's also important that, I think it's, this might be a hot take, but I think that God might, not show us our calling, but let us go find it. I mean, it won't be a conference call, but rather a tech. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a comparison. Right <laughs> I don't got, I got a comparison to it. <laughs> but maybe if you're applying from jobs, you end up here. They say, "Wow, this is perfect." Like I, I, I didn't know, and so you weren't really called to it, but you end up doing it, and that up being for me something super fun, super enjoyable. I think that I could also be someone's calling. But you only get to that place if you're out there trying knocking on different doors because you don't actually find your calling by by staying uh, stagnant just sitting there so i think that that's important too I, bro i think something too is like when you was hitting on that it's just like how peter went from being a fisher of fish to a fisher of men right like god still used his strengths mm. to go be a fisher of men you know and so i think like when a lot of people think of a calling they're like man like okay, I'm dropping everything that I'm familiar with, but God has blessed me with the skill set to do the things. He's already equipped me for every good work. Like it says that in the word. And so it's like, man, like if God has already equipped me, he's going to use those strengths so I can be a fisher of men. So I can go evangelize to people. I think like people like you, like you're really good at talking to people. You're really good at having, you know what I'm saying? You're really yeah. good at having like one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. And so like, man, you may have, you may have that in certain aspect now, but God is going to use that in the future. Like, man, like, shoot, you're really good at talking to people. I'm going to use that same strength. Not just you, like, man, I'm yeah. done talking to people. It's like, nah, like, he's going to continue to use that type of gift. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and you, you're like a, you're like a booming voice in the room. So it's like, nah, man, no doubt. Nah. It's like, man, like, God is going to use that. He's not going to tell you, hey, bro, just drop your strength. You know, he's like, nah, we're going to actually use that, but use it for my glory this time. You know, so that's just how God works, man. I'm just seeing that. That's crazy. Also, it, it, we've got to give him a shot. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. He thought he was going to dodge it. That's Los Angeles, baby. He went dodging it. But I'll go say to you, though, if you've got a skill for basketball and sports, God knows I don't got that skill. But you are but you are being active in that skill and lead people to him, Jesus, in that skill. And that other skill that I can't have. And so it's this thing, again, where each of us have a different calling. And so if I compare my basketball skill to his, it's never going to match up. In the opposite way, I have skills that he obviously probably doesn't have. So that's huge too. Sure. I'm gonna you back off of that. I think this man is a servant's heart, man. Like he's willing to do anything and everything that's asked of him, no matter what is asked of him, man. It's just because out of the, the goodness and his faithfulness of his heart. And I think that's just a beautiful quality to have. And it's a gift straight from God. And like up on your point from earlier, you know, I, I think it's important to recognize when we are called to do things, it's not going to be appealing at first. In fact, it might be, you know, 
destructive. Right. You might feel right. afraid of the actual yeah. calling. Yes. Yeah. And that leads me to believe that sometimes like God calls us to do things that we don't like to help him to help give him more glory in that setting. And I think that's that's just a key thing that we should hone in on, because if you think you can do what you're calling on your own strength, you're fooling yourself. This is why he calls you to do it, because he knows you're going to have to rely on his, his strength. Yeah. So I think it's important when we recognize, like, what am I what, what am I looking for? What's my calling is, well, can I do the things that I'm doing right now on my own strength? Or is this thing that God's calling me to do? Do I need everything and him and some more to help me get through the things right now? I think that's a good place to start, because even for me in my life, I think about where I'm in and stepping into like this transitional phase and I'm like, oh man, I got like this business degree, but there's some opportunities for me to go into to youth ministry. And I'm like, well, the business seems a lot more appealing to the eye because of the stability and the security. But man, oh dude, like that ministry stuff, it's just, it's just something so fulfilling about that, right. but it's not appealing to me. Like it's not, it's, it's not the thing that makes me feel like, oh, I get the, the most joy. But then I look back, I'm like, well, am I now associating joy to a monetary value or am I associating joy to the validation of the world or like does my joy actually come from God and that's something that I've been wrestling with for the past month and a half or so so now I feel like I'm at an open scene where I'm a lot more open-minded to the idea of me pursuing something that's unappealing to me but appealing to the advancement and furthering of God's kingdom man yeah bro that's good I think what's so good about you hitting like that point like it's, it's it can be unappealing at first I think of like when Jesus was talking to the wealthy man he said like he said how can I enter the kingdom of heaven Jesus he says Shoot, you got to drop everything. He like, give up everything, like give it away. And he's like, ah, well, I don't know if I want to do that. And so like, sometimes we can let let that look of the thing being, uh, the calling being unappealing, like deter us from actually walking in the calling that God has for us. And so like, I was talking to one person, she was like, man, like I, wa- I ran from God for three years, but then when I decided to stop running, I've been the most fulfilled in my life ever I, I, that she's ever been. I was like, dang, like, and so it's like, how many people how many times do we let like that, that just look of it being unappealing get in the way of what God wants us to do, man, and which essentially has us running, you know? I, I truly think that our calling will fill us up. So it might not fill up our pockets, but I think it's going to fill up our contentment and our happiness. Because I think a lot of people are afraid of their calling because it won't bring them that self-centered self-satisfaction. Mm-hmm. But I think it'll bring us that godly satisfaction. And so for you, maybe being in business, maybe business is paid higher probably, but is not gonna bring that, that real set of satisfaction? Probably not if you're called into doing the other church, which I don't know often mm-hmm. because I'm not God, but I think a lot of us are scared of our calling because we're gonna have to drop everything. But you look at all the disciples and how Jesus called them and in order to follow Jesus they had to drop everything and I think a lot of us are wanting to follow Jesus but we don't want to drop everything you can't have both you're gonna have a foot in both worlds it's not gonna work so we have to drop everything to be in our calling and so I just I just again I talked to so many people who I can tell are afraid of their calling because oh it's not gonna let me have this house and this car it's like are you looking for this house and this car or are you looking for Jesus, and that's a big question. I think a lot of people have to ask to themselves. I think a wise man once said, don't be a Jonah, be a Noah, man. And if you look at that, Jonah was the guy who was running away from what God was calling him to do. But Noah picked up the call and answered that. And then we see the fruit of that would happen in Noah's story. And so if you look at Jonah and you compare it to like people in the world today, I think there are a lot of people who are running from their calling. In fact, they're not even picking up the phone when they, they see the phone dialing. That it's just God. <laughs> because of they know that that comes with that, that really that elevated level of responsibility where yeah. it's like, you know, if you go through with this calling, suffering will come. I think that's why it makes it so much appealing because you know that you're going to be persecuted. You know that it's going to be uneasy. It's going to be a rocky road. But in the end, it fills you up. It's more fulfilling when you get to see lives change and souls come to Christ and God reconcile back with his people. But like how selfish is it for us to to have a calling and to like not pick up the phone because we want to grab our own desires? And then we see all that all prevalent in the world today where people are using like different forms of self-seeking love to gratify their own desires. And then they wonder up 40 years later on why they're bored at home and during retirement because they don't feel fulfilled. But yeah. the people who've been missionaries their entire life or people who've been serving in the capacity that God has called them to do, they talk about how much joy they've had at every step of the way. And then you look at the story and how they describe it. It's like, this sounds like the worst thing ever, but you're talking about it in such a joyful perspective. And I think when we look at that, it's like, because it's something that God does to your heart as that's being, you know, as you're in that process. And you think about Romans 12, it's that, that renewal of the mind and the heart. And that only comes when you answer the call 
to have your heart renewed and your mind transformed by God's Holy Spirit. But I think too, so many of us struggle with conforming to the patterns of this world that we can't even recognize the call at first because we're so blinded by other, other voices and narratives inside the world today. So I think I guess it's important for us to just look at what it is in our life. What, what is it that I want to accomplish? Is, is it accumulating wealth like that, that rich man who walked away sad because he couldn't give that up? Or is it making a difference in the change and advancing and building God's kingdom the way that he wants it to through you? Because I think, like, how, how unfortunate is it having the body of Christ illustrated in the Bible for us, talking about all these wonderful gifts and how it can be used to expand the kingdom where we only, now you look at it, it's like, but we only have a hand, we only have a thumb, we only have a knee. It's like, but we got a head and there's some feet and there's, there's a thigh and a hip that no one's using because they're not willing to step up in that cause. I, mm-hmm. That like grieves my spirit because it's like, yeah. yeah, we need the full body to be functional, right? Yeah. You know, I can't just be wobbling and hobbling on one leg hoping to make a difference. Like, I need <laughs> you just as much as you need me and, you, and we all need God together. Man. Yeah, bro. That's good. I think like, you know, we talk like being a Christian is like living a born again lifestyle. And I think like something that keeps us away from answering that call is the death of our past self. Mm-hmm. It's like a lot of people, we, it's like, shoot, me, even me myself is like, you don't want to die to the old things, which is like, man, like, man I still want to do this. I still want to do that. So it's like, it, re- it gets in the way of living that born again lifestyle. And I've seen like, so, and then on another point too, is like, I've been in so many spaces to where it's like, man, when I'm doing stuff for God and I'm doing stuff strictly for myself, and I have way much more joy when I'm doing stuff for God and I'm doing stuff for myself. And so like that sometimes can be a precursor to that calling as well too. You're just like, man, like, shoot, like I love doing this, but ah, this is this, this one, this area got the stability, it's got that monetary stability, but it's like, shoot, I don't really enjoy it for real. It's not that really fulfilling, but it's like this side may ha- may not have that, that monetary fulfillment or monetary uh, stability, but it's like, man, but I got so much joy and I love doing this. So I just think it's so, por- so important that we also look at our lives now and look at where are the spaces that we're in and where do we have the joy of the Lord at mm. compared to where we have like uh, that feeling of unfulfillment at too. Mm. And they are both your points, uh, how it's not a conference call and each of us are different part. I'm thinking how our calling or each person's calling might not make sense to a different person. So I think if I'm a foot and you're sharing how you're an arm, I'm going to say, no, be a foot. Cause like, I'm a foot, but it's like, no, actually you should be an arm. And so again, our calling might not make sense to other people. And I think that's actually a good thing. I think that that actually shows the place where we're going to have faith. We're going to have to trust. Cause if all my friends are feet and arms and I'm a, I'm a hip or something. It's like, ah, if all my friends are feet and arms, I can't be a hip. But it's like, man, that's, that's the spot that we actually have to trust God and go, go after that and act and be that hip. You know, now it just made me think about the story of Noah. I mean, if you look at it, for, if you zoom out from perspective, it had not rained until that point to where God told him to start building the ark. Yeah. And to the outside world, people coming up to Noah like, bro, what you doing this ark up for? And he's been in for year after year after year. And it's like, oh, yeah, like there's no rain coming. He's just, he's being faithful. He's being faithful because it doesn't make sense to the outside world. But he knows what God told him. And I think likewise with us, it might not make sense to, to leave a lucrative field to pursue a field that's less stable. But when you look at the work that God can do for you in that less stable field, man, it'll be way more fulfilling than pursuing that lucrative field. And just like Noah, man, I mean, being his his faithfulness to what God called him in the work, the things that make people didn't think make sense to him, save the entire world and his right. family, right? Yeah, yeah. We're here because of Noah's faithfulness, bro. <laughs> Not because of him trying to uh, please, please men or please the others, man. So I think when we think about what our calling is, think about the effects that it can have on the world. If me pursuing this lucrative field, if that only gratifies me and my immediate family, I gotta do some real heart check diagnosis. I gotta look inside the mirror. But if my faithfulness to God has the ability to change the world, that might be something for you to consider and ponder on, man. Yeah, I think like the top Christian quote we always hear is, uh, God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. And I think like when it comes to calling is that we just need to give God our yes and let him take care of the rest. It's like, man, cause he's like, man, just, just, just tell me yes. And I'll provide you with the tools. I'll provide you with the things that you need so that you can go on with this because I wouldn't be calling you to it if I wasn't going to provide you with the things that you need to do it for you to do that job, bro. So I think it's like, man, we also have to trust in God's sovereignty and trust in his provision because if he's putting this on your heart and he's calling you to do this for a reason, he's not going to leave you out to dry. Yeah. Bro. He's not in your, and if you answer that call and if you, actually like live out what God is calling you to do, 
bro, you won't regret it, bro. You won't regret it at all. And I've like, I've talked to some people like, man, like, man, I went to ministry and I, I hated it at first. I hated it. But as I kept on going, as I kept on like meeting new people, man, like this is the best thing I ever done, man. And they, they don't regret it. So I think it's like, man, like we just need to walk in God's sovereignty and walk in God's provision, knowing that he has the best for us. And so the thing about it is like, like God wants us to win, but he just wants us to win his way, you know? So that's why it's so important for us to actually follow his provisions. And like, I remember one analogy we talked about is like, um, like setting up a shelf, right? We're building a shelf. It's like, we try to build the shelf without the manual, you know? But God is like, bro, here's the manual, bro. Just do it like this. And when we do it his way, it comes out perfect, bro. But when we try to do it our own way, we don't, we don't know what we're doing. We don't know what tools to use. We don't know how many screws to put in there. But God's like, look, this is what you need. This, I'm giving you the screws. I'm giving you the, I'm giving you the hammer, like this type of stuff. And like, that's just how God sees it with us, man. You know, facts. It takes time. I mean, he built down the mark for years and years and years. And up in the same way, it takes a short amount of time to build a chair than it does a house. Mm. And so different callings take different amounts of time. And those with a higher calling, it takes a, a longer p- period of time. And so I think some people are, are, are jealous of their friends calling, which can be a chair, which isn't bad, isn't bad, but their calling's a couch or something. That's going to take time. And so it's a thought of keeping our eyes on God's calling for us and not our God's calling. And, and, and not having our eyes on God's calling for others. Mm. Because now, obviously, all this can help a different person, but we can't keep our eyes on that person. We gotta keep our eyes on Christ and help out any time that we can. Back to Christ, help out any time I can, back to Christ. But it's not just help them, help them, help them, and then we don't got a calling. Because we each have a calling. Each of us are on here, are, are here from, for, for purpose. And God has a calling for each of us. It just takes, takes time. Um, again, it took him years and years and years to build that ark. People were making fun of him. His friends were like, bro, what? His family like, are you sure? This, bro? And it's like, man, but look at the end. We are all here because of him, bro. That's true. Keep going. No. <laughs> Keep going. Bro, it's crazy because now I'm thinking about how God has a way of, if you don't answer that call, of intervening and mm. making you answer that call. Man. Like, Joan, he'll snatch you for sure. He'll snatch you for sure. He'll snatch you for sure. We, we both know firsthand, bro. He'll come and get you, bro. And so I'm about the, the story of Jonah. He physically walked away from the car, tried to jump into the ocean to swim away from the car. Yeah. And God still got him and brought him to the shore yeah. to do what he called him to do. So, like, don't think that you can just avoid God's calling for the rest of your life. Sooner or later, he's going to come and get you, intervene, and snatch you up, bro. And so I, I would say make it easier by picking up the phone now because there are some people that are being nudged by God right now who are just completely ignoring the call. And you hear all these stories about people evangelizing, trying to share the good news. Maybe you got that auntie who's like, hey, you need to come to church with me this Sunday. Maybe your grandma's talking to you. Maybe your mom and your pastor's talking to you. You're just like, no, nah, I don't do that Christian stuff. No, nah, I don't do that God stuff. But there's a special call in your life, and you're just ignoring the call because you want to please your own self. But I'm like, there's just so much more fulfillment when it comes to answering that call that I firsthand experienced by choosing to pick up the phone. Because I was one of those guys, I'm like, I'm trying to do that church stuff. I'm going to stop talking about God, man. I'm going to do my own thing. And then it took me running away from God, <laughs> swimming away from God, to get snatched back up. And he brought me to what he wanted me to do. And now we get to glorify God alongside him. It's amazing, bro. Bro, that's so huge. Man. And I think of, like, having that when God snatches you up and, like, having that encounter, bro. And I think of, like, Acts, bro, when, when Saul, when Saul, who is now Paul, think. who wrote 13 books in the New Testament. Yeah. And this dude literally had an encounter with Jesus. This man was killing Christians, mm. bro. Killing Christians, bro, for sport, bro. And like God came and encountered him and snatched him up and set him on his calling. So it's like, man, 13 books of the New Testament, bro, that's huge, bro. That's huge. And so it's like, man, we don't get that if God doesn't snatch him up where he's at. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's like, I think it's so important to like just encouragement for the people is like, man, let God meet you where you're at. Bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But don't be in a position to where God has to snatch you up. Because it's going to be way worse. <laughs> if God has to snatch you, snatch you up, is way worse than you actually answering that call and just following it. Thanks, nice, man. It helps me think of it's never too, it's never too late. Meaning that it's never too late for us to fulfill our calling by God. I mean, mm-hmm. that some people think, oh, I'm too far gone. Oh, I've done this, I've done that. Paul was killing Christians for sport. Wrote 13 books. It's like, it's never too late. I think a lot of us take ourselves out of the game. It's instead of coach calling us out. And it's just that idea of keep going, keep pursuing it. Um, again, we just, just, I'm just so big on this com- comparison thing where we're com- but he's been doing it for this many years and she's been doing it for this many years. You're not there. You are you. It's never too late. Hop back in. God, he wants you here. He wants you to spend time. 
being in his presence. It's never too late. Keep going. Here's what I think. <laughs> here's where I think the person is so dangerous because it's people like that who compare themselves to what they see people who might be self-righteous and think that mm. they're the holiest of the holiest and they're like, oh, that's a man of God or that's a woman of God, but they're actually far from God. And we look at Paul or, or, or Saul back then, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure he thought his calling was to kill Christians. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure he thought that was what he was supposed to be Angel doing. Calling. And everybody's yeah. looking at Paul like, oh, he's a he's a Hebrew of Hebrews. He's, a Israel, he's the Israelite of Israelites. Like, that's his Paul. He's the Pharisee. Right, right. And this dude was killing Christians. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. But once you took a step back and he had that encounter with God, he was blinded, then he was actually able to walk into the actual calling. So I would say it's it's very dangerous to to believe what you see by just your own eyes because now you might believe that what something somebody else is doing in the quote unquote name of God is actually from God, but it's not actually of God at all. Mm -hmm. So it's important to run your own race. This is why Paul says, I have fought the gift, but I've run the race, mm -hmm. his own race in his lane, and now he's actually oh. changing the world, man. But when you're focused on lane eight or lane seven, and when you're in lane two, now you're getting distracted. In fact, yeah. you're deceiving yourself thinking that I'm supposed to be in that lane when you have your own lane right here, man. Mm -hmm. Man, that's so good. I think like what's also so dangerous about comparison is that it can overwork you or it can underwork you mm -hmm. as well, bro. Because sometimes, bro, with comparison, when it overworks you, you're overworking yourself in a calling you were never meant to be, bro. Mm. And then the other, and a uh, flip side with underworking, bro, it's like, man, like, shoot, well, I'm just not qualified, man. This guy's got it. I'm gonna just let him do it. But it's like, dude, just run the race that God has set out for you, man. Stop trying to look at everybody else's lane and stop trying to look at the speed at which they're going. Bro, go at the speed. It's like, bro, I think God's race, God's race, God's pace, bro. Yes, That's the way that we need to be living life, bro. It's just like, man, like God wants me to go at this pace, I'm gonna go at this pace. God wants me to run this race, I'm gonna run this race. Not looking at somebody else's race or looking at somebody else's pace, bro. And if you don't know where to start, ask God. Now, this is a, a, a story completely out of context, but if you remember when Peter was in the boat with the disciples and Jesus is walking on the water and they're were, they were all screaming like, who's this man on the water? Who's this ghost? Jesus says, Lord, I and mean, Peter says, Lord, if this is you, command me or call me to come out on the water. And he literally asked Jesus to call him. And then Jesus told him to come out and he walked on the water. But he had to ask first in order for him to see that it was actually good to bring him to walk on the water first. I think so many people fall and find themselves in positions where they're hesitating to ask because they're unsure if God will even give them an answer. Mm -hmm. But God actually wants to give you an answer to what you want to know in your life. You just have to seek him. And he's like knocking at the door, waiting for you to open it up. And there he is with the gift, waiting for you to give it to you. But you're, you're just so hesitant because of comparison, either yeah. overworking yourself or underworking yourself. But it's like, no, God, God has something mapped out for you. I mean, he said to Jeremiah, I'm giving you a calling before you were even in the womb. I'm like, yo, that that is special. That means that it's very precise and intimate to everybody uniquely and individually. So don't think about what you're doing or what so-and-so is doing down there when God is the God of every single individual in this world, right? Not just a certain group of people, not just another certain group of people. We, we saw this in Romans where the Jews and the Gentiles were beefing because they thought God was only a God of a certain group of people. No, he's a God of people who call his name, man. Like, so if he, people who call him his name, he accepts them, then don't you think that the people who ask him what they're calling is, he will reveal that to them? Yeah. No, man. And it's like, it's what's so just interesting about God and his character is that he thinks of each of us more than the grains of sand that's on this earth, bro. Or the, however many grains of sand that was ever oh, on this no. earth, bro. That's, I, you, can't even, you can't even count it. But, and that's how many thoughts that God has of us individually, not as a group, but individually, mm -hmm. bro. And so it's like, man, if he has this many thoughts about me, why won't I go ask him about my calling yeah. or what he wants to have for my yeah. future? Because I'm pretty sure he's thought about it 100%, bro. So it's like, why not ask him? I think it's also key that we get that I'm trying to see of how I should say it, but God knows who we are, which I'm saying he knows the things that we feel as we are bad at. Like he knows those, those things. I think a lot of us think, oh, I'm bad at this, so I can't do this. Like, no, no, no. God created you this, this way. Uh, there are the people that I'm speak that are paralyzed. There are people that I'm speak who have a speech impediment. There are people, like all these different things happen. So maybe someone's sick. It's like, no, no, God has you here. He has you the way you are on purpose, and yet your calling is still huge and important to, to him. I think that we let things that we're bad at uh, affect the, the, the things that we could be good at. Oh, God, that's a good point, man. Salad stuff. Oh, dude, no man, doubt. that was... Each one teach for it. Each one teach for it. In summary, man, oh, man, God gives a call to everybody, man. You just gotta pick up the phone, man. Mm, Drop yeah. everything, pick up the cross, pick Immediately, up the phone, man. Immediately, man. And a conference call, man. Man, we appreciate you guys. We out here.
Peace. Peace.